Hello, my fellow investors, Eric Winkler here with Rent to Retirement. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about appraisals. So, appraisals. This is part of the process that you go through when you're purchasing a, a property, whether it be a rental property or even maybe your, your personal residence or anything along those lines. It's just one of those steps in the transaction. So let's just cover some of the basics. As far as an appraisal goes, let's start with what is an appraisal? So an appraisal is typically ordered by your lender. So they're trying to determine the value of the property. They're making sure that there are comparable sales in the market that show the, uh, the value of the property. So when you're looking at our inventory, you'll notice that there's, there's all kinds of different properties in all kinds of different markets and pretty much all kinds of different price points. One of the most common questions I get is, where, where did you come up with these prices? It's a great question. So when we come up with our prices, we're actually looking at comparable sales in the market. Because the follow-up question to that typically from an investor is, hey, are these prices negotiable? The short answer to that is no. The prices that we put on the, on the price sheet are, are not negotiable, but you can rest assured that you'll be coming in at market value because your lender is going to be ordering an appraisal. So who does the appraisal and who, who orders this? Well, one of the first things that we take a look at is when you go under contract, you'll notice that we are telling you to order your appraisal right away. Why? Well, because there's a lot of folks doing lending right now. We're looking at the rates. The rates are at historic lows and there's lots of loans that are being done, not just for investment properties, but for purchases of uh, a residence, uh, refis, all of those things require an appraisal. So if there's hundreds of loans in a given market, that's hundreds of appraisals that need to get done. In other words, what I'm getting at is it takes some time to actually get an appraiser out to your property. It can take anywhere from four plus weeks in some markets because they're just that backed up. So we usually, when you get you under contract, you'll notice these emails flying back and forth. And I know you get a lot of them, but please pay attention to them. One of those is going to be saying, hey, you know, you need to contact your lender and order the appraisal. You don't have to wait for the inspection to be done in most cases. Uh, you don't have to wait for repairs to necessarily be completed because we already know it's gonna be another four weeks from now. So we don't wanna get the repairs done, get the inspection done, then wait another four weeks to get the appraisal done. So we wanna order those things rather quickly. The other thing that we take a look at is what happens if my appraisal does not come back at value? That's a great question. So when an appraisal comes back, most of the time they come back at value. Uh, when it comes back at value, that means the, the appraisers come in, which is a third party independent representative appointed by your lender. They come in, they take a look at comparable properties, meaning of the same type, uh, sometimes the, the same square footage, uh, in the neighborhood that have been sold recently. That, that would be a comparable sale. And they compare and contrast the subject property to these other properties and assess a value on that. When something comes back at value, that means they have assessed that, yes, this, is, this should be the sales price for this property. We can proceed to closing. Sometimes they actually come back overvalued, right? So you have a 150 purchase price and the appraisal comes back at 160. What does that mean to you? Well, it means you started out with $10,000 equity in your property and congratulations. It doesn't happen all the time. It typically comes back at value, but in rare circumstances, you'll find that appraisals will come back under value. And that's what we really need to talk about. So if something comes back under value, you really have three options in this scenario. Option number one, if you recall, when we put the, the purchase agreement together, the purchase agreement is contingent upon your inspection and your appraisal. So at any given point in time, if the appraisal came back low, you do have the option to cancel. That's, that's option number one. Obviously not the option anybody really wants at this case, at this point, because you've already put the property under contract, you've already gone through an inspection, any repairs that need to be completed have been completed. I mean, we're, we're almost done here. It's really just getting down to value and closing. So now we have two other options. So option two would be to contest the appraisal or even order another appraisal. 
Gotta face facts, folks. Anytime we have human beings involved in any type of process, no matter whether it's appraising, uh, flying airplanes or whatever, there's, there's human error and uh, there's, there's the human condition. So one of the things we have to take into account is sometimes folks make mistakes or they didn't take into account some of the stuff that's happened during the rehab and added value to the property. These things do tend to happen. So we may contest the appraisal. In, uh, in the off chance that the, the contested appraisal does not go through, we may order another appraisal altogether. Now that will differ by lender. We may even need to change lenders to get another appraiser in there. Regardless of that though, that's exactly what we're here for is to walk you through this process. It's not to raise alarm bells, it's perfectly normal. And one of the things that we have noticed is that with the amount of loans that are going on or transpiring right now, remember, every loan needs an appraisal. So if there's hundreds of loans, that's hundreds of appraisals that need to be done. Number one, the workforce is very low. The pool of appraisal appraisers is low as well. A lot of these folks use uh, like a clearing house, if you will. They, they just go to a, uh, a lot of lenders will go to, the best way to describe it is a website. They type in the need an appraisal at X address, and then there's a pool of appraisers that will just let them know their availability. Well, with the high demand of appraisals comes a need for more appraisers. So this means that you maybe wind up getting a, a brand new appraiser, not a lot of experience in the market, and they can make mistakes. It's okay, it's part of the process. We go through this together. If it comes back low, remember, one of the options that we have is we can contest the appraisal or order another appraisal, just getting a, a second opinion. Just like you would with almost anything else. If you had a car repair, you went to the mechanic and you weren't too satisfied with the answer, it, it didn't sit well with you, then you would go to, hopefully you would go to another mechanic and get a second opinion. Same concept here, very normal. Option three, we may have an appraisal that comes in under value, but it's really close. To me, that's, uh, it's annoying. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, we have a, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. I had an appraisal that came in just yesterday. The purchase price was $127,000. The appraisal came in at $125,000. It's a $2,000 difference. Now, remember I told you in the beginning that our prices are based on comps that we've already researched in that market. So we could contest it. We could also order another appraisal or have them go to another lender, them being the investor, have the investor go to another lender and start this process all over again. It's really nobody's best interest, especially when we're that close. In that case, what we do is we call it meeting in the middle. So there's a $2,000 discrepancy. What we do is we, we cut that in half and we lower the sales price by half. So in other words, not, not half of the entire purchase price, half of the discrepancy. So in this, in this instance, it was a $2,000 discrepancy. We lower the price by $1,000 and move forward. So in, instead of getting the, the property for 127, you wind up getting it for 126. So a little bit of savings for you. Everybody's happy. We can move forward. We don't extend this another 30 to 45 days going through all of this again. Everybody wins. So hopefully that has shed some light on appraisals and what to do when your appraisal comes in. The, the bottom line is that's exactly why folks love using a place like Rent to Retirement. Myself and my colleagues here are here to walk you through this process so you're not trying to navigate these waters by yourself. Uh, a lot of folks don't even know that you can challenge appraisals. A lot of folks don't even know that you can order another appraisal. They just get an appraisal and they figure, well, the value is the value and you know this is some scientific process. It really isn't, folks. I mean, it, there's gonna be some subjectivity to it because again, you have human beings involved. You're asking someone else to go into a market. Sometimes they don't have a lot of experience in. They may not even know the neighborhood, like a uh, neighborhood A, uh, the prices are more than neighborhood B. So you've got to, we, we got to watch all of these different things as well. Local knowledge is really key when we're pulling our price points, when we're looking at our property management, when we're getting our rents. That's why we focus and rely on local knowledge. When your appraiser gets in there, they're going to be looking just at data. So it, it's, it's really tough for some appraisers to, to take a look at the neighborhood. And not to mention, there are some properties that just don't have 
good comps. What I mean by that is if you bought a, a duplex in an area that has had no duplex sales for the last six to eight months, and we all know what has been happening with real estate prices in the last six to eight months, they've been steadily increasing. But if there's not a comparable sale in that market, that could have a negative effect on your appraisal. So there's many different factors that can, can have an appraisal come in high or low. Obviously, the goal is to have them at value and provide a great experience to you, the investor. So again, the appraisal is there to, to protect you, to protect the bank. Not always a scientific procedure, but we are definitely here to walk you through this to make sure that you're having a positive outcome in the investment experience. If you like everything that you're hearing and you want to get more information from the rental retirement staff, subscribe below and we will continue to provide more updates for you along the way. If you liked what you heard, give us a big thumbs up so that we can, can, can track that and get more traction with you and our other viewers. Uh, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Have a great day.